Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Jorge. I'm a year of painting. Today is going to be a day in our life of how to be a professional painter. We're going to go see a couple jobs. I got a couple quotes lined up as well, so let's just ride with it. I followed around the owner of this painting company for a day to see what the business is like, and in this video, you're going to see the stuff that went wrong, breakdowns of interactions with customers, and the tips and tricks that make Jorge thousands of dollars in his business every single day. But we're giving away two MacBooks in a few weeks to two premium or platinum subscribers of Quote IQ. so if you need help keeping up with customers, sending estimates, invoices, or collecting payments, check out Quote IQ linked in the comment section and the description of this video. Also, if you want to learn the Facebook ad strategy that helps Jorge land commercial and residential painting jobs, it'll be the first link in the comment section and the description. Jorge, tell us a little bit about what we got going on today. Yeah, so today we're about to start pressure washing the whole building. Since we're going to start prepping it on Monday, we got to always clean it first. We move our mold, mildew, algae, so that way paint can stick to it. So the plan for today is to pressure wash everything. So we're going to go ahead and crack up the pressure wash and give it a good clean. Come back Monday, start prepping, caulking, putting, sanding, priming, whatever. And you told me that they wanted to get this building looking like that one over there, yeah, right? just like that. From experience, they don't know what the color of that one is, but I think it's alabaster. Later, we gotta go get a swap from Sharon Williams, go match the color as close to it as possible. The client is not really picky about it, but we're gonna try to get as close to it as possible. So everything's gonna be white, and then they're even thinking about doing the doors, the window trim, everything, that gray color as the shutters on the other building. So they're just pretty much copying that building. And how did this uh, building hear about you? I was on Facebook through a Facebook ad, actually, we was running from my boy here, Justin. I didn't pay him to say that either, he just said it. <laughs> yeah, I got proof, he found us through Facebook. I think when I first started here, since it's a realty um, office, I came and dropped some cars back in the day when I first started, you know, dropping business cards. So, I mean, it just works out, man, long term. First job of the day, we're gonna go ahead and get this washed, we'll get some footage, and then uh, we're gonna go to the next spot. Yeah, so like I said, we're trying to match as close to this building as possible. It's not really picky, so if it's not 100%, he it should be fine with it. I'm thinking it's an off-white color here from Sharon Williams. So do you paint match a lot, Jorge? Yeah, but never say it's gonna be a hundred percent. Cause I mean, you can see the building from far away; it could look different. Or today, if the sun is hitting it, it's not. You just gotta keep that in mind until you're crying. So that way, it's not on you. So you kind of set expectations exactly. with them all the time on everything. It's, it's better to exceed expectation than underachieve it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a photo of this with the stucco and send it to the client just so that way I can get confirmation and I have it in text so that way like I said it's not just words try to have some kind of proof of what the conversation was because I had instances where they tell you some over the phone or in person and then they forget and you don't have any proof and that's on you so always if you talk about a color a finish satin glass semi-gloss before you go and get the paint I would text the client hey I'm just making sure you said you know flat this color and when they confirm yes, then you have it as proof. If they mess up and they don't want it later, they got to pay you for it. All right, you guys are getting a little gas. Jorge, you got a nice wrap on this truck. You ever get any calls off of it? See, I have to work on that. I have to work on asking people where they found those two. But I did it for when you pull up to a client's location. Pretty much all of our estimates are in person. It just gives a different perspective of your company. You know, you're serious about it. You invest it in your company. It's just a, a high end return on it. Even if nobody calls you just from the jobs you get, always have your company shirt on. Look neat. You know, that's, that's something that a lot of people don't do. And that was the your game up from the competition. Hey, how you doing? This is Trevor and Prevo. This is Jacob. Hey, man. I got to place a quick order. Okay. Can I get three gallons of uh, interior uh, super paint flat? Okay. And do you have some solo uh, gloss in just regular extra white? Uh, we should. Yeah, just give me two gallons of that. Okay, sounds good. All, All right, right we'll get working on this for you. All right, I'm on my way. Thank you. All right, Jorge, how many gallons did we get, bro? Uh, we got three gallons of flat for the ceiling, uh, two gallons of gloss for the trim. I typically recommend semi-gloss because gloss is really shiny, but um, they wanted a bougie, so. So this is specifically for that job we were just at? No, this is for another job we're headed to right now. It's an interior job. We pretty much painted the whole entire interior, ceilings, trim, walls, everything. Jorge, tell us a little bit about how you started your business. So we started back in 2020. Well, it's a funny story. I've started the business with no knowledge, literally zero knowledge of painting. So my cousin was actually the one that got me into the business. So I started riding with him for a while. He was showing me a few jobs he was doing. When I first opened my business, he gave me the first job I ever had. Knew nothing about painting. So it was pretty much only my dad doing the labor work and I was kind of learning. At that point, I was working at AT&T as a sales guy and I couldn't take off. So it was like, either you want the business or you have 
D1 AT&T, so I decided to quit. So I pretty much quit it with no jobs, no experience, uh, nothing. I was just going for it. So it was it was difficult times because at the time, you know, you had to find your work. You didn't know how to market. You didn't know what you was doing. You didn't know how to talk to people. So it was a roller coaster, but here we are today. Thank God everything is, is rolling, but don't think that opening a business is easy. You're gonna have your ups and downs, but it'll be worth it if you stick with it. need to be done uh one wall and then kitchen cabinets okay exterior only or uh interior too of the cabinets oh i don't know okay you plan on changing colors or the same color for the cabinets don't okay i i don't know about the <laughs> color on the cabinets okay. i know about the color for literally everything else but the <laughs> cabinets i was just told to set up an appointment when are you free if you're free today around like 1 p.m i can stop by i can do one yeah that works text me your address and then i'll meet you there at 1 p.m i can certainly do that all right thank you mr john you take care man tell us a little about what we're doing here bro the client bought the house called us which is the best way to do a full interior repaint so they're not living in it they want to move in by next week we should be done probably by monday so we're doing everything closets baseboard shelves doors the entire house from top to bottom like i said except some cabinets but i'm gonna show you real fast so all this is done that like you can see we put the first coat on the crown um it's this ugly yellow color currently we're bringing it to bright white we got to do this cabinets too um the walls are in the repose gray color they're done the ceilings it's just snowbound which is almost white you can see it's a big difference we got bright white to the windowsills and the doors so technically the ceilings and the walls are done around the entire house. I got the guys bar store doing the trim. It started from the crown down. That's always how we do it. Where did this customer hear about you from, Corey? Uh, so this one was actually a, a referral from a past client that we did some work for. That's also near here. Uh, she referred us. They used to live right next to them. So, I mean, like I said, you do a good job. You're gonna have work forever. For an entire interior like this, how long usually does it take? I'm saying about to do walls and trim, probably about six days, five to six days. If you're doing cabinets and everything, probably another like three, four days. Probably about like 10 days here, everything. So Jorge, we talked a little bit about how you got started with the business with your dad. How did you start bringing on employees and, and like, was there any challenges with regards to doing that? Yes, the challenge is trying to find good employees. I mean, I have my cousin, like I said previously, he's, he's been in business for a few years. So he kind of recommended a couple guys. You know, once you get like a couple people, then those people know more people. So you can kind of expand a little bit faster. Of course, you always got, you know, the training and trial period, make sure they're on time, make sure they do what they're supposed to do. But I started bringing in people when I had a contract to give me about like four new construction homes. So I couldn't just do it with my dad. I had to bring like three more people in. So that's when I pretty much started hiring. But I'll tell you, nobody's gonna do the work or the quality of work like you would do it. So just expect that, you know, don't expect somebody to take care of your business as you would. So Jorge, where are we headed now, man? So we're headed back to the first job now. We had an incident. My dad, the back door was already cracked. He was pressure washing. I mean, we've been doing this for years. So he knows not to put any pressure on actual glass, but I guess from water, licking in or something maybe the breeze from the water or the hose some made the the glass actually shatter completely so now we're gonna have to have one of those tough conversations that you're gonna have to have in business with your client and figure out how to fix it you know either they already knew when they were gonna replace the door do you have to get the glass fixed like that's what we're headed to do now we'll show you what the process is as you can see the glass is already shattered from what the client said it was already like that. She said she actually had this happen to her house. The glass was already shattered. Her mom only touched it and it fully cracked and, and, and shattered. So, I mean, it's not our fault. I'm gonna still talk to the actual landlord, make sure everything is good. But from what she said, he already had planned to change it. So we should be good. It's just about when they're gonna change it. But the one in the back is fine. It was just the one in the front. All right, Jorge, tell us where we're at, man. Yeah, so this is another job that we're pretty much wrapping up. So this was some cypress cabinets that we went ahead and prime, sand, caulk, filled. And we painted it, we put two coats of uh, emerald paint from Shane Williams. So now we got the jewelers laying down to dry. Well, they're already dry, it's been like five days now. Got the doors stacked up here. They're done on both sides. So pretty much we're just waiting until tomorrow to 
rehang everything, put the doors back, put the drawers back, pick up all the paper, take from the floor. About 90% done, it should be done tomorrow with the whole project. So we've looked at three jobs today. How many jobs do you guys usually have going at one time? Probably one or two. I have a small crew, but I like it that way. I feel like you can get better results versus having a more crews, unless you have like leaders and you know somebody to manage everybody so that way. Well, everybody's on the same page. We're at Subway now. We got a few minutes before we gotta go ahead to an estimate. So we've been driving some lunch real fast. We are uh, headed to a quote now from a lady that found us through next door. I believe she told us all of the exterior she wanna paint it, like the soffit, the fascia, the hardy, hardy board siding, some stucco, I believe she said. So we're gonna go now, um, walk the house with her and make sure what she wants, you know, we can, we can do. All right, Jorge, I think that quote went really good. I got a couple questions about it for you. Yeah. Um, but how did you feel it went overall? Yeah, so the lady, I mean, she's pretty nice. We asked her some questions. Try to get a little bit personal if you can. People buy from people they trust and like, so just try to be like them. She did ask us a funny question, and that was, are we the cheapest in town? Y'all are like the best in town. Prices too. Uh, shop around. Do you typically get that kind of question, Jorge, or is that like so? Some people ask that. I'm guessing they ask it to see if you give them a price right away. I typically don't give a price right away just because you can make mistakes without taking your time and looking over photos. Like I told her, you know, you can't you can't expect to get good quality and a good price. It's just those two things don't go together. So either you're getting good quality or you're getting good price. And we we strive for quality, so. We're not gonna be the cheapest in town. Prices, I wouldn't say I'm the, oh. the best in town. I don't think you can get quality and good prices. We're competitive, but we're not gonna be the cheapest. We kind of talked about the paint color a little bit. Is that something that a lot of people ask you, like what paint color you'd recommend? Oh. Do you have something in mind, like color? No, I'd have to look at some colors, yeah. maybe. What do you think would look good? I want something light. A lot green. of people are doing off white. What I've learned over the years is that never suggest one color. Let them pick it out, let them like be good with the color. Because if you choose a color for them, they don't like it, then they're gonna blame it on you. But if you give them options, they look over, they look at photos, I sometimes even, you know, pull out the, the color online. As long as they can make up their mind and be comfortable with it, we're good, you know. But never pick the color for your client. So the last quarter of the day was very strange. It started with the guy getting confused on when the appointment was scheduled for because he was clearly speaking to a bunch of other contractors and price shopping his quote. Didn't we have the appointment for one today? Oh, sorry, you're the one at one. I'm sorry, I've got 8 million things going on today. I'm bad with names and bad with everything, but uh, okay, sounds good, see you at one. So you can already tell that he got like three other quotes lined up. Then we went to his house to do the estimate and he had a real life giraffe in his living room, which of course I couldn't help myself, I had to ask him about. Is this a real giraffe right here? Yeah. That is incredible. Yes. I've never seen like anything like that in person, Thanks. I guess. And as we walked the house, it was very clear that this painting project was something that he attempted first and then decided that he didn't want to complete. You can definitely tell that he's shopping for prices. I think that's what you should do. In reality, get at least two to three quotes so that way you don't know if you're getting stared for it. If you're hiring the right, the right person. I don't think you're gonna get that one, honestly. I think he's gonna go with whoever quotes the cheapest. But who knows, you're gonna have to let us know if you get it. The day ended after Jorge called the landlord for the property with the broken glass. He explained the situation and the landlord reaffirmed that the glass had been broken and that he was planning on getting it fixed soon. Yeah, it's not a big, I mean, it's no biggie. I just need to find who would replace or put that glass in. And, and yeah, that's not, a, that's no big issue. Like I said, I just wanted to inform you. I think the lady told me that she knew already. But this was my favorite lesson of the video. Sometimes in business and in life, we're gonna have to have these tough conversations that we don't necessarily wanna have. They're uncomfortable but there's no way around them and that's why the word of the day on this one's gonna be tough comment down below tough if you made it this far in the video and I'll hashtag you a real one hit the thumbs up button for me subscribe to the channel and until next time hustle hard and get that money baby peace